To set things right, here are what Talking about survey, when should we use a survey? First of all, let's define what a survey is using this semantic webbing. Survey. It is known as one among the many tools used to collect data to describe understand and analyze naturally arising phenomena that exist in the real world. It is mostly utilized in researches to gather a great deal of information about memories, knowledge, experiences, attitudes, and behaviors in a relatively quick and easy way. Further, it is used for investigation or to investigate the characteristics behaviors, or opinions of a group of people. What is the goal of a survey? What is our purpose of using it? A good survey design aims to ensure that the data and information you have at hand much as closely as possible with the experiences, knowledge, authentic thoughts, interest, and feelings of your respondents. Because if there would be a great gap between the survey contents and the real point of views of your respondents, that means a response bias exists. What is a response bias? A response bias is a tendency of a respondent to answer questions on a survey untruthfully or misleadingly. An example of a response bias is social desirability. Social desirability leads people to respond in a way that makes them look better than they really are. For instance, a respondent answering a survey might report that they engage in more healthy behaviors than what they really do in the real life. The next question is, how do we collect data using survey? A survey can be administered in a couple of different ways. We could do it using one method known as a structured interview. Here, the researcher asks each participant with the questions. In the other method known as a questionnaire, the participant fills out the survey on his or her own. The questionnaire method tends to be the most common. Why use surveys? Let's answer this in connection with the first question earlier by citing some advantages. One of the big benefits of using surveys is that they allow researchers to gather a large quantity of data in a well-organized manner or efficiently in ways which are relatively quickly and cheaply. Surveys are less expensive 
because data can be collected in person, over the phone, or on a computer. In addition to that, surveys can be easily created and can be administered without difficulty. You just have to prepare questions for interviews or a questionnaire to utilize. Surveys have diverse uses. It can be used to collect information on a broad range of things, including personal facts, attitudes, past behaviors, and opinions. Why not to use surveys? Of course, if there are advantages, there are also some disadvantages. One potential problem with written surveys is the non-response bias. What is a non-response bias? It is a type of bias that arises when people are unwilling or unable to respond to a survey due to a factor that makes them differ greatly from the people who already responded. It is also sometimes called as participation bias. A non-response bias may be due to a poor survey construction that does not target intended skill. Survey is also subject to social desirability bias as mentioned in the previous slide. At times, surveys' contents are poorly designed and that may affect the validity and accuracy of the respondents' responses. Because for one, it can influence results, meaning to say, sometimes the researcher includes choices leading towards the information he intends to have and not really the respondent's point of views. So these are just some of the disadvantages of using a survey. Now, dealing with non-response bias, here is an example wrong audience. It is very important to choose the right target audience when sending surveys out. For example, sending a survey about weekly work hours and earnings to undergraduates or unemployed young graduates may not receive as much response as it would with employed people. On the other hand, it is the same with a survey about how many hours are spent studying for exams which may not receive response from non-students or out-of-school youth. And uh, now that we're done discussing some essentials of research survey, let's check your understanding. Try this one. Modified true or false. You just have to identify whether the statements are right or wrong. Write the letter T if it is correct and F if not. If false, change the word that made it incorrect or deleted. And that will be all for today. Thank you for watching. I would sure love to have you all again next time. Have a good day and always wear a happy heart.